My name is Shelley Tamtom and I run the Kensington Heritage Library. Big shout out to all my friends in Kensington and area. Um, I'm going to read you a little story today and I thought we might sing a silly song too. Um, just because right now it's kind of a strange time, isn't it? We're being asked to stay in our houses an awful lot. And it's important because we want to be able to stay healthy and to make sure that our friends and our family stay healthy as well. So um, I thought maybe for our silly song, we would sing, um, There Are No Bananas. And I know some people in Kensington will know this song. Um, some other kids might know it too, because I have been around singing this song for a little while. And uh, it goes like this. So this starts off with some actions. The first action is no. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There's a sun and a moon and a coconut cream pie, but there are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. So that is how the song goes. And the other thing that I found really cool, and I figured out the other day, because the grown-ups are asking us to wash our hands for 20 seconds at least. And what I figured out is that if you say, there are no bananas song two times, that's about 20 seconds. So let's try it together. We'll pretend we have some soap and some nice warm water, warm running water. And we'll say the song again without the actions, but because we're going to wash our hands. Are you ready? There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There's a sun and a moon and a coconut cream pie, but there are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There's a sun and a moon and a coconut cream pie, but there are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. And then we'll dry our hands. There you go. Might be a fun way to say it, to try that. So we will um, maybe at the end do that one more time and we'll try it. Usually when we do that with kids, we try it really, really fast to see how fast we can do it. But first I'm going to read you a little story. And this story is called Knock Knock Teramok. And you'll see here it says a traditional Russian tale adapted and illustrated by Katya Arnold. So it's a traditional tale, a traditional story from Russia. And a teramok, this word right here, that's not an English word, that's a Russian word. And it means um, a little hut. So basically this story is about a whole bunch of animals who try to fit into a little hut. And right now we're being asked to be not very many animals in our huts, right? We're being asked to stay um, stay by ourselves. So I thought it'd be fun to read this story about a whole bunch of animals who try to squish into this little hut. And it goes like this. And you'll also notice that it's, it's very repetitive. And if you'd like to say it along, I would love that. That would be really fun. All right. Goes like this. A fly was flying in the sky. She came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. Who lives in the teramok? Nobody answered, so she made the house her home. A mouse was running in the field. She came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. Who lives in the teramok? It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. Who are you? I am the mouse who needs a new house. Let's live together. Well, looks like the mouse moved in. A frog was leaping through the field. He came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. Who lives in the teramok? It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs a new house. Who are you? I am the frog from out of the bog. Let's live together. A duck was walking through the field. He came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. 
who lives in the Terramok. It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs a new house. It's me, the frog, from out of the bog. Who are you? Well, I am the duck who has good luck. Let's live together. A hare was hopping through the woods. He came across a little hut. Who knock, knock, knock? Who lives in the terramock? It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs a new house. It's me, the frog. Oops, that's not a frog. It's me, the frog from out of the bog. It's me, the duck, who has good luck. Who are you? I am the hare who jumps in the air. Let's live together. A fox was strolling through the woods. She came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. Who lives in the Terramock? It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs a new house. It's me, the frog from out of the bog. It's me, the duck, who has good luck. It's me, the hare, who jumps in the air. Who are you? I am the fox in the nice white socks. Let's live together. A pig was walking through the woods. She came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. Who lives in the terramock? It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs a new house. It's me, the frog from out of the bog. It's me, the duck, who has good luck. It's me, the hare, who jumps in the air. It's me, the fox in the nice white socks. Who are you? I am the pig who can dance a jig. Let's live together. Oh, here comes my little friend Yogi to say hello. <laughs> a wolf was marching through the woods. He came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. Who lives in the Terramock? It's me, the fly from out of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs... Oops. It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs a new house. It's me, the frog from out of the bog. It's me, the duck, who has good luck. It's me, the hare, who jumps in the air. It's me, the fox, in the nice white socks. It's me, the pig, who can dance a jig. Who are you? I am the wolf, the nice little wolf. Let's live together. Look at that terramock. It's getting awfully full. Do you think we can fit anybody else in there? I don't know. Let's see. So they did live together, and everyone was happy. A bear was stomping through the woods. He came across a little hut. Knock, knock, knock. Who lives in the Terramock? It's me, the fly, the queen of the sky. It's me, the mouse, who needs a new house. It's me, the frog from out of the bog. It's me, the duck, who has good luck. It's me, the hare, who jumps in the air. It's me, the fox in the nice white socks. It's me, the wolf. Oops, it's me, the pig, who dances a jig. It's me, the wolf, the nice little wolf. Who are you? Well, I am a bear, and I need a new lair. May I live with you? No, there's no room. Go away. But, hmm, may I stay on the roof? What do you think? Do you think you should stay on the roof? Oh, may I stay on the roof? No, you're too heavy. No, I'm not. Let me try. The bear's gonna try to live on the roof. What do you think's gonna happen? So the bear sat on the house and he squashed it. Oh no. And everybody barely escaped. Oh, thank goodness. Everybody escaped. That's good, good news. 
but now they're going to have to find another house. I wonder where they're going to find another house that will fit everybody. Maybe their new house would have room for the bear because I think the bear looked like he might be a kind of a nice guy. Just needed that place to stay. So I'm going to challenge you to look around your house and see if you can find something that you could use to build the Terramok. Maybe some Lego or some books stacked up or hmm, maybe some boxes, old cereal boxes or something, and put a bunch of stuffies in it and see if you can do a retelling of that story and have the bear come along and squash it. But everybody escapes because it's a happy story. So that's my challenge for you. And if you have a Terramok built with all of your animals put in it, I would love to see a picture. If you could put a, um, a picture in the comments under this video, that would be really awesome. All right, so, um, so parents, you might be hearing this song or this uh, story <laughs> a little bit, um, which is a good thing because, you know, we want kids to um, have um, repetition and familiarity and things that they that they know because of course those things make make us um, make us more comfortable and help us to get through the day when we have routine and things that that we're familiar with and and um, so I hope you enjoy that story because you might hear it a little bit um, and let's do our silly song one more time and see if we can do it really fast okay do you remember all right there are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There's a sun and a moon and a coconut cream pie, but there are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. So that was regular. Ready? We're going to do it faster this time. One, two, three. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. There's a sun and a moon and a coconut cream pie, but there are no bananas in the sky, in the sky. <laughs> Very fun. Anyway, thanks for letting me... Um, Come into your living rooms and, and read your story and uh, somebody else will be here next week to read another story and hopefully I'll be back sometime soon so we'll see each other again. Cheers everyone. Take care of each other. Hi, bonjour, and welcome to Language for You. Bienvenue à Language pour vous. My name is Peter. I'm an English teacher at Stone Park Intermediate School in Charlottetown, and welcome to our show. There will be many guests on this show talking about many different things. We're just here to try and help you improve your French and English language. Je peux parler français, mais je préfère parler anglais. My apologies, my French is not that great. So I prefer to speak in English. Um, I do like to play sports. I love animals. I love going outside and being in the nature. I grew up on a potato farm out in Brackley Beach. And now I'm a teacher. But, just like you, I am staying home and doing my best to stay safe, just like we all are. I'm hoping we can all get back into school as soon as it's safe for everyone. So this program, we're just trying to help you improve your English. This show is for anyone who wants to improve their language skills and French skills in general. Again, I will apologize. Mon français, eh, comme ci, comme ça. Je prefer anglais parce que it's my first language. But I know how important it is to speak another language. There's been many times where I've been in many different countries and couldn't understand what was happening around me. So I encourage you to work on your language skills, try something or a new phrase every day, and just do your best. Throughout the show, we're going to do many different things. We're going to do some drawing, we're going to hear a story, there might be some exercise, 
but we're just here to have fun and do our best. That's all we can ever ask of any of, us, uh, of, any of ourselves. We're just gonna do our best. You'll notice the production or quality every day is gonna be a little different, and my apologies for that. We're all learning different skills, and we're learning different ways to edit video, how different ways we can shoot video and work with audio. So there's a lot of stuff, even us teachers are trying to like relearn. So my apologies for that. So welcome to the show, bienvenue, a, I hope you have a great time and let's get on with the show. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm great. I'm great. I'm not so good. I'm not so good. Terrible. Terrible. Now, when I'm talking with my friend Vicky, try and write down any words that you hear and you know you can write. Just do your best. We may be talking very fast, so my apologies for that, but just with a pencil and save you some paper, just write down the words you hear. Okay? Great. And just do your best. Okay, so I'm going to call Vicky. Hey, Vicky. Hi, Peter. How are you? Hi, Vicky. I'm fine. It's great to see you. How are you doing today? Me? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. What did you do yesterday? Yesterday? Oh, I went for a bike ride, and then I spent some time working in my yard. What did you do yesterday, Vicky? Me? Yesterday, well, I read a book, and then I went for a really long walk. It was beautiful outside. There were lots of people walking with lots of dogs. That sounds like fun. I love seeing dogs out for a walk. They always look so happy. Oh, I love dogs. I have a really big yellow lab. His name is Jackson. Actually, I can show you Jackson. He's right there. Hi, Jackson. Wow, Jackson looks like a good boy. I mean, I wish I had a dog. Oh, but I'm starting to feel hungry. What are you going to have to eat today? Today, I think I'll have a turkey sandwich and a really nice red apple. How about you? Well, that sounds delicious and healthy. Um, I think I'm gonna make a salad and maybe finish it off with a glass of orange juice or apple juice. I'd have to check my fridge to see what's there. But I am getting hungry, so Vicky, I'm probably going to say goodbye, and we'll talk later. But thanks for talking with me today. Okay, bye friend. Have a great day. Bye Vicky. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. I think she's gone. So, how did you do? Did you write down a few words? If you got between one and five words, that's a great start. If you got up to 10, that's very well done. If you got more than 10, that's awesome. And if you got 20 words that we said, terrific, well done. If you got more than 20, you're a superstar. And thank you for trying. Okay, as long as you did your best, that's all we ask. Okay. Time to move on to another segment. My favorite part of the show, this is Pets of PEI. And today's pet is actually my neighbor's dog. And his name is Bronco. Bronco is one years old. Uh, he likes to eat bones, usually like, you know, any bone he can find. He likes running, digging, swimming, and fetching frisbees, sticks, anything he can carry in his mouth. And his owner says, he's a good boy. He does need some dog school because he's only one years old, but he's still a pretty good boy.
We want to see your pets, so please send pictures of your pets to us here at language at gmail.com. Remember to include your pet's name, how old they are, their favorite snack, what they like to do, and why you like your pet. We look forward to seeing all the great pets of Prince Edward Island. Thank you. We will play a game now. Please look at the picture. Where is the ball? It's in front of the hat. Where is the ball? It's behind the hat. Where is the ball? It's next to the hat. Where is the ball? It's on the hat. Where is the ball? It's in the hat. Where is the ball? I can't see it. Oh, there it is. The ball was under the hat. Where is the ball? It's between the hat and the apple. Where is the ball? It's on the apple? Oh no! The ball ate the apple. What are these? They are hands. What are these? They are fingers. What are these? They are fingernails. What is this? It's a thumb. What is this? It's a wrist. What are these? They are hands. What are these? They are fingers. What are these? They are fingernails. What are these? They are thumbs. What are these? They are wrists. Do you know how to wash your hands? Let's learn today. First, turn on the water. Get your hands wet. All right, now put lots of soap on those hands. Good, and rub your hands together. Now interlock your fingers and clean in between. Get both sides. Excellent. All right, now you want to go on the back of your hands and lock them together again, just like that. Very good, now do the other hand. All right, what have we forgotten? Oh, okay, our fingers. Get those nails. All right, and the nails on the other hand too. We want them to be nice and clean. Next, let's do our thumbs. That's one thumb. There's two thumbs. All right, and you can do your wrists too if you like. Now we're getting nice and clean. Now let's rinse off our hands, get all the soap off. And we're gonna dry our hands on a paper towel or a very dry towel. Make sure they're really dry. Good job, that's looking much better. Okay, and turn off the tap with the paper towel. Good job, we're done. Hello everyone. Now we will wash our hands singing the ABC song. This is so we know how long to wash our hands. All right, let's start.
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my A, B, C. Next time, won't you sing with me? All right. Good job, everyone. Go wash your hands. Il est temps de dessiner. It's time to draw. Prenez un crayon, prenez du papier. Grab a pencil, get some paper, get some markers and an eraser. Obtenez des marques et une gum. Nous dessinons avec Nick Don. We're drawing with Nick in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Drawing the Sounds with Mr. Sheehan. This is Esther the Elephant. To draw her, you will need a pencil, an eraser, a pencil sharpener, and a black marker to outline, and maybe some colors. But I will use a black marker so you can see what I'm doing. Esther's face starts with a circle. A big circle in the middle of the page. like that. Esther has two big eyes. One big circle and one more big circle. Esther is an elephant so she has a long nose. You can use a long curving line to show her nose. If I am drawing too quickly, you can pause the lesson and catch up. Esther has two eyebrows over her eyes. One eyebrow and two eyebrows. Esther has some hair on top of her head. Three pieces of hair. One, two, and three. Esther has big ears because she is an elephant. You can use a long curving line to draw her big ear. She has another big ear on the other side of her head. We can show the top of her ear by using another long line. Esther has some light showing in her eyes. She has one big light bubble and one small light bubble in each eye. Esther has some lines at the top of her nose. One, two curving lines. Esther also has round circles on her cheeks. One circle and two circles. Esther also has eyelashes at the sides of her eyes. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Now Esther and elephant start with the same sound. They start with the eh sound. Do you know what letter makes the eh sound? Yes, that's right. It's the letter E. E, elephant, eh. We can even see an E in her 
nose. Let's make an E together. This is an uppercase E. E, elephant, eh. And this is a lowercase e. E, elephant, eh. And Esther and elephant both start with the letter E. So here is Esther in color. I colored her blue and pink inside her ears. And I gave her pink cheeks. And I colored her eyes orange and purple. Thank you, Nick. That was quite fun. Um, this is what I came up for my elephant. Um, Esther's looking pretty good. I think I could even like turn it into a mask if I really wanted to. So thank you, Nick. That was great. If you would like to share your pictures with us here at Language for Vu, please send us an email. And we would love to see how your Esther turned out. Hopefully you gave it some color. Hopefully you gave it a little bit, you know, of your own personal touches to the elephant. And we would love to see your pictures. So if you could send them in, that'd be great. Our next segment is a story with our own Jennifer. So Jennifer, Take us away. Hello, I'm Miss Newbold. I'm a teacher in Charlottetown, but I used to live in Japan. Today, I will tell you a story from Japan. It's called Peach Boy. Once upon a time, there was an old man and an old woman. They were very nice. They were happy. But sometimes, monsters came. Urgh! Some were red, some were blue, and some were green. They hit houses with sticks. Then they took food and money. It was terrible. One day, the old woman went to the river. She said, I want a baby. She looked at the river. She saw something. It was yellow and pink. It was a big peach. She said, Oh, we can eat it for dinner. I love peaches. The old man came home. He was hot and thirsty. He saw the peach. I will cut it open. Wah, wah, wah. What was in the peach? It was a baby boy. Wah. They named the baby Peach Boy. Many years passed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now Peach Boy was fifteen years old. He was very strong and kind. The monsters came again. They hit the houses with sticks. They took all the food and money. Peach Boy said, This is terrible. We must stop them. I'm going to Monster Island. The old woman gave him a yummy lunch and kissed him goodbye. Peach Boy walked and walked and walked. <laughs> what was it? A dog. Where are you going? asked the dog. I'm going to Monster Island. I'm hungry, said the dog. Give me some lunch and I will help you. The dog and Peach Boy walked and walked and walked. Eek, 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 eek. What was it? A monkey. Where are you going? asked the monkey. We're going to Monster Island. I'm hungry, said the monkey. Give me some lunch and I will help you. The monkey and the dog and Peach Boy walked and walked and walked. Tweet, 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 tweet. What was it? A bird. Where are you going? asked the bird. We're going to Monster Island, Peach Boy said. I'm hungry, said the bird. Give me some lunch and I will help you. The bird and the monkey and the dog and Peach Boy went in a boat to Monster Island. The monsters ran out and said, Arr! 
The dog bit their legs. The monkey jumped on the monsters. The bird flew on their heads. Peach Boy jumped as th on the biggest monster. Peach Boy said, Listen to me. I have the monster king. The monsters were scared. Oh no, they said. What will happen? The monsters stopped fighting. They said, We're sorry. We will give you the food and money we took. We will never hit your houses again. Peach Boy and the bird and the monkey and the dog went home. They gave all the food and the money to Peach Boy's family and friends. Everyone was very happy. The end. Thank you for the story, Jennifer. That's the end of our show for today, folks, and children, and everyone of all ages. I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who made this show come together. A big thank you to Nick and his drawings, as well as our interviewee, Vicky, and Jennifer for her story reading and hand washing. Remember, be kind, do your best, and stay safe. From all of us here at Language for Vu, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye! Au revoir! Jolo, les amis, je m'excuse. Je pensais pas que tu étais déjà arrivé. J'étais partie me chercher une banane. Hmm? Est-ce que tu aimes les bananes, toi? Moi, j'adore les bananes. Hmm. Connais-tu un animal qui adore les bananes? Quel bruit il fait? <rire> oui, le singe adore les bananes. Hey, aujourd'hui, j'ai une super histoire pour toi. Je ne veux pas être une grenouille. Pourquoi pas? Hey, on va apprendre quelque chose sur la grenouille. Elle ne veut pas être une grenouille, mais elle n'a pas le choix. Est-ce qu'on peut changer? Si Madame Julie décide que... Hmm, ben, j'ai décidé que je voudrais être un ours. Est-ce que je peux? Non, je peux pas me transformer en ours. Je peux mettre un costume, mais pas devenir un ours. Hmm? Les amis, c'est un autre belle journée aujourd'hui. Hein? Ah, on commence notre super journée par une super histoire. Je ne veux pas être une grenouille de Dev Petit et les illustrations sont de Mike Bolt. Hmm. On va voir ça. Je ne veux pas être un ch... Euh, non. Je recommence. Je veux être un chat. Un chat? Tu ne peux pas être un chat. Pourquoi? Regarde. Il veut être un chat. Tu vois? Il y a un petit chat sur son nez. Puis il lui dit, pourquoi? Ça devrait être facile. Si je veux être un chat, pourquoi pas? Parce que tu es une grenouille. Je n'aime pas être une grenouille. C'est trop humide. Eh bien, tu ne peux pas être un chat. C'est trop humide. Qu'est-ce que c'est humide? Ben, humide, ça veut dire trop mouillé. Hein? Trop humide, ça veut dire que... Toujours la sensation que c'est mouillé. Hmm? Il lui dit, tu peux pas être un chat. 
<rire> ben, euh, d'abord, euh, je veux être un lapin. Tu ne peux pas être un lapin. Pourquoi? Je sais sauter haut. Mais oui, pourquoi pas? Il est capable de sauter. Hein? Les lapins, ça saute. Moi, je le verrais bien en lapin. Hmm. Oui, mais où sont tes grandes oreilles? Et qu'y a-t-il de mal à être une grenouille? Je n'aime pas être une grenouille, c'est trop gluant. Peut-être, mais tu ne peux pas être un lapin. C'est vrai, hein? Regarde, il ne peut pas avoir des grandes oreilles. Non. Puis il dit qu'il est trop gluant. C'est quoi gluant? Oh. C'est comme ça glisse quand tu touches, là. C'est comme... C'est mouillé, mais collant un peu, là. Hmm. Mais il peut pas. Il est une grenouille. Ben, euh, d'abord, euh, je vais être un cochon. Mais tu ne peux pas être un cochon. Pourquoi? D'abord, parce que tu es une grenouille. Ensuite, parce que tu n'as pas de queue en tire-bouchon. Ça, c'est vrai. Et tu ne manges pas d'ordures. Des ordures? Je peux manger des ordures. Attends d'y goûter. Non, tu ne peux pas être un cochon. Tu vois? <rire> me semble, oui, une petite grenouille qui devient un cochon. Et je ne suis pas certaine que la grenouille va apprécier les ordures. Tu fais quoi des ordures? C'est des déchets qui sont dans la poubelle. Du compost. Mm -hmm. Toutes les choses qui se mangent à la maison et qu'on n'aime pas, on les met à la poubelle. Ou les pelures, tout ça. Les cochons aiment ça. Mais pas les grenouilles. Je veux être un hibou. Bien sûr que tu veux être un hibou. C'est super génial d'être un hibou. Oh, tu adorerais être un hibou. Alors c'est oui, je peux être un hibou. Hmm, imagine, un hibou, puis une grenouille, est-ce que ça se ressemble? Hmm, non. Crois-tu qu'il peut devenir un hibou? Hmm, on va tourner la page pour voir. Hmm, non, bien sûr que non. Pourquoi? Tu n'as pas d'ailes, des ailes pour voler. Tu n'as pas l'air sage, parce qu'un hibou, ça a l'air sage, hein? Ça a l'air très sérieux. Tu ne peux pas faire pivoter ta tête complètement. Oui, un hibou tourne sa tête. Oh, complet, tout le tour. Oh. Et quatre, tu ne peux pas parce que tu es une grenouille. D'ailleurs, qu'y a-t-il de mal à être une grenouille? Oh, une grenouille, on mange trop d'insectes. C'est juste des insectes. Je vois. Quand même, tu ne peux pas être un hibou. Hein, tu vois? Tu ne peux pas. Tu n'as pas d'aile. Tu n'as pas l'air sage. <rire> tu ne peux pas faire tourner ta tête. Pivoter ta tête de tous les côtés. Hein? Donc, tu ne peux pas être un hibou. Oh! Les grenouilles mangent des insectes. Regarde son, son sandwich. Il y a plein d'insectes. Mais les grenouilles adorent les insectes. Mais lui, il est tanné de manger des insectes. C'est pour ça, peut-être. Il est gluant, il est humide et il mange des insectes. Il est tel. Pourquoi fais-tu cette tête? Il rencontre quelqu'un et il dit, pourquoi tu fais cette tête-là? Ouais, parce que je veux pas être une grenouille. Ah bon? Que veux-tu être alors? Je ne veux pas être une grenouille. Je veux être un chat, un lapin, un cochon ou un hibou. Un animal mignon et tout doux. Hmm. Je vais te confier un petit secret. Tu vois, il rencontre cet étrange personnage avec son gros nez noir et non, ce n'est pas Penny. Il me semble que c'est un loup. Et le loup lui demande, mais pourquoi tu ne veux pas être une grenouille? Et regarde, le loup lui dit, je vais te confier un petit secret. Hmm. C'est vraiment un loup, hein? Mmh. Qu'est-ce que c'est-il? 
J'adore manger les chats. Je raffole aussi des lapins, des cochons et des hiboux. Justement, j'ai un petit creux. J'ai bien envie d'en croquer un sur le champ. C'est terrible! Je suis fait ainsi, mais devine quel animal je ne mange jamais. Tu vois? Le loup lui dit, moi je suis fait comme ça. Je mange ces choses-là et je ne peux pas changer. C'est comme ça que je suis. Euh, il lui demande, Quel animal je ne mangerai jamais? La grenouille lui répond, oh, Le blaireau! Peut-être que tu ne manges pas de blaireau? Hein? Non, il mange les blaireaux. Non, 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 je mange beaucoup de blaireaux. Tu vois, il mange tellement de blaireaux, il peut en manger deux douzaines. Deux douzaines, c'est combien ça? Oh, une douzaine, ça te dit dans le mot douze. 12, mais deux fois 12, il pourrait manger 24 blaireaux. Oh là là, c'est un loup qui a un gros appétit. La seule chose que je ne mangerai jamais, c'est une grenouille. Bingo! Pourquoi tu ne manges pas des grenouilles? Parce qu'elles sont trop humides, gluantes et remplies d'insectes. Ah, tu vois, il n'aimait pas être humide, gluant et manger des insectes. Hum, mais ça a un plus d'être une guenouille. Ah, alors c'est bien d'être une guenouille. Ah, oui, c'est bien d'être une grenouille. Oh, tu vois, je vais oublié de te montrer. Hum. Les loups n'aiment pas les grenouilles. Donc, c'est bien d'être une grenouille pour pas se faire manger par un loup. Ouais. C'est bien d'être une grenouille. On ne peut pas renier, renier sa nature. On est ce qu'on est. Toi, tu es un féroce chasseur. Oui, et toi, tu es une grenouille humide, gluante et mangeuse d'insectes. Très chanceuse. Tu devrais te réjouir de ne pas être une mouche. Une mouche? Hmm. Peut-être qu'une mouche, ça dit la même chose. Moi, je ne veux pas être une mouche parce que les grenouilles me mangent. Mm -hmm. Tu vois, il est chanceux d'être une grenouille parce que le loup ne le mange pas. Puis le, le loup lui dit, mais imagine, tu devrais te réjouir de ne pas être une mouche. Pourquoi? Ben, qu'y a-t-il de mal à être une mouche? Mais ben, quand on est une mouche, on se fait avaler par une grenouille. Voilà mon histoire. C'est vrai, hein? Regarde, les grenouilles adorent les mouches. Pauvre mouche, elle n'avait pas le choix d'être une mouche. La grenouille n'a pas le choix d'être une grenouille. Le loup non plus. On est comme on est, hein? Madame Julie et Madame Julie, puis toi, tu es toi, unique et spécial. Qu'est-ce que tu vas faire de beau aujourd'hui? Aller jouer dehors? Faire un peu tes leçons d'école? Et peut-être euh, d'autres choses amusantes. N'oublie pas, n'oublie jamais qu'il faut laver nos mains. C'est important. Si tu vas jouer dehors, si tu fais des choses spéciales, il faut les laver plus souvent maintenant nos mains. N'oublie pas de demander à maman et papa avant d'aller à l'extérieur. On doit rester autour, hein, dans notre petite bulle de la maison. Hey, je te souhaite une bonne journée. Aujourd'hui, c'est mercredi. C'est la moitié de la semaine. On se voit demain. Bye, bonne journée. J'embrasse.